Among the story tracks of the NASCAR Cup Series, Bristol Motor Speedway stands as a cathedral of speed, where legends are forged and history is made. Join us as we take a look at some historical moments that created the legendary track of Bristol Motor Speedway. Three, two, one. Bristol Motor Speedway Fact Number 1 In the world of NASCAR, few names resonate with the thunderous echoes of victory quite like Daryl Waltrip. From thrilling finishes to dominant performances, Waltrip's legacy at Bristol is a testament to his skill, determination, and love for the sport. With a prowess unmatched, Waltrip conquered Bristol time and again, etching his name into the halls of racing history. Daryl Waltrip racked up a staggering 12 victories at the iconic Bristol Motor Speedway, a feat unparalleled by his contemporaries. Daryl Waltrip went on to win a total of 84 races and three NASCAR Cup Series championships in the NASCAR Cup Series throughout his illustrious career. Number 2. Rattling his cage. Bristol is known for causing flared tempers with its door-banging wheel-to-wheel racing. In the August race of 1995, Dale Earnhardt rammed leader Terry Labonte and spun him out on the front stretch as they approached the finish line, but Labonte still had the momentum and hung on to win the race. Fast forward a few years later, in 1999, history repeated itself when Earnhardt and Labonte went at it for the victory again. This time, though, it was Earnhardt who won after wrecking Labonte in turn two on the last lap. Following the race, Earnhardt went on to say, Terry got into me in the middle of three and four, and I was going to get back to him and just rattle him. I wasn't going to wreck him, but I got to him and he turned him around. So didn't mean to really turn around, I meant to rattle his cage. Number three, the unbelievable. In 1990, Michael Waltrip was involved in a horrifying crash. This incident occurred during the Budweiser 250 NASCAR Busch Series race held on August 24, 1990. During the race, Waltrip's car made contact with the wall, leading to a violent crash. The impact was severe, and it resulted in a frightening moment for Waltrip with unbelievable damage to his car. Fortunately, Waltrip emerged from the crash without serious injuries but the incident served as a reminder of the dangers of racing at high speeds on short tracks like Bristol. Ironically, in 2002, driver Mike Harmon was involved in an eerily similar crash during the Food City 250. Luckily, Harmon was able to walk away. Number 4. A Caution-Free 500 Charlie Glotzbach's victory at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Volunteer 500 on July 11, 1971, was an amazing feat for the driver. In the race's run to date at Bristol, it is the only one that went caution-free for all 500 laps. Charlie Glotzbach took the checked flag a full three laps ahead of second-place Bobby Allison and six laps ahead of third-place Richard Petty with an average speed of 101.074 miles per hour. The win marked the final trip to victory lane for Glotzbach, who tallied four victories in his 124 starts. Number 5. Breaking the Winless Streak when the field took the green flag in the 2001 Food City 500, no one really expected much from Elliott Sadler and the number 21, Wood Brothers Racing Ford. Up to that point, Sadler was winless in 74 career Cup Series starts. The Wood Brothers had last visited Victory Lane in 1993 with Morgan Shepard. Sadler took the lead when Kevin Harvick had to pit to replace a punctured left front tire on lap 431. The Wood Brothers team left Sadler out rather than make a late race stop. The gamble paid off as Sadler became the third first-time winner of the 2001 season. Number 6. The Block The confrontation stemmed between Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick from an incident with 35 laps remaining when Harvick and Elliott collided while racing for the lead in lap traffic. Elliott, who had led the previous 52 laps, pitted for a flat left front tire from the contact. The driver of the number 9 quickly made his displeasure known upon returning to the track, hitting the left side of Harvick's number 4 Ford and squeezing him up the track while getting a lap back. Elliott then kept his car in front of Harvick with blocking maneuvers that eventually handed the lead and the win over to his Hendrick Motorsports teammate Kyle Larson. Number 7. Rubbins Racing In the 2008 Sharpie 500, Kyle Busch had been dominant, leading 415 laps. After a restart with 35 laps remaining, Carl Edwards went low under Bush, and for the next five laps the two drivers battled like their cars were locked together. In the end, Edwards took the victory, but Kyle Bush wasn't done. 
giving Edwards a bump after the checkers Edwards returned the favor by spinning the number 18. Number 8. Nighttime is the right time. The 1985 night race proved to be a landmark moment for the sport as it was the first primetime telecast of a race in NASCAR history. Legendary drivers Dale Earnhardt and Tim Richmond battled door handle to door handle for the victory in the race's closing laps. Earnhardt eventually used his patented bump and run move to get past Richmond and the number 27 car with 18 laps to go. Earnhardt, who was blocked by Richmond during several of his earlier passing attempts, called his power move on lap 482 to take the lead. Good, close hard racing. Richmond wasn't amused and said Earnhardt's effort was his typical tactics. Number 9. The Return to NASCAR Roots In 2020, in response to sagging attendance to the track spring NASCAR race weekend, the track announced that their annual spring race would take place on a dirt surface, with the track being temporarily covered with dirt in order to accommodate the change. The race became the first NASCAR Cup Series to be ran on dirt since 1970. However, the event faced criticism from various groups including drivers. After three years of dirt action, the track announced it would revert back to concrete. Number 10. The Final Lap On April 1, 1993, following the death of Alan Kulwicki in a plane crash, NASCAR mourned the loss of one of its own. Following the tragic incident, the transporter for Alan Kulwicki's race team, took one final lap as it exited Bristol Motor Speedway for a final time. The checkered flag was waved as the transporter passed the flag stand in a moment of silence. Bonus moment, the record fall off. The March 17, 2024 running of the Food City 500 saw a record number of passes for the lead with 54 between 16 drivers. The biggest story of the day was the wear to the tires. On early pit stops around lap 25, teams were reporting signs of cords showing in the tires. Something not typical for such an early stage of pit stops. Excessive tire wear left Goodyear tire officials and teams puzzled as it was the same tire used the previous year. There was one difference, which was a resin placed on the bottom groove of the racing surface. The track never laid rubber down and only turned to marbles on the outside racing groove. This caused teams to quickly go through tires creating an intense and interesting race for drivers and fans alike. Tire strategy became the game plan as cars suddenly slowed around the track due to tire wear and blown tires. In the end, the teammates of Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex were able to use a driving strategy to save their tires and battle for the win throughout a sea of slowing lapped cars. Hamlin brought home the checkered flag to echo a booze from the race fans. The race created one of the most exciting races in Bristol Motor Speedway history.